All right, let's open our Bibles to Exodus. Exodus chapter 34, we're going to start reading from verse 10 through 17. Exodus chapter 34, verses 10 through 17. If you have the ES Bible, let us read it all together. And he said, Behold, I'm making a covenant before all your people, and I'll do marvels such as have not been created in all the earth or in any nation. And um, all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe that what I command you this day. Behold, I'll drive out before you Amorites and Canaanites, the Hittites and Par Perizzites, and Hibites, Hippites, and Jebusites. Take care lest you have make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land which you go, lest it become a snare in your midst. You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their asherim. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is the Jealous God. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and when they whore after their gods and sacrifice to their gods and you are invited you eat of his sacrifice and you take of their daughters for your sons and their daughters whore after the gods uh, and make your sons whore after their gods you shall not make for yourself any gods of cast metal amen last week we kind of talked about uh about you know israelites who were worshiping the idols and you know how god forbids them to you know worship the idol and god was very very angry with them and we talked about how that we should not have idols in our life and one of the things that you know i understand is that i think you know today's message is kind of connected to the last week's message where you know we should not have idols and one of the reasons that we should not have idols is that god is the god of jealous and one of the things that you know we, we we like to talk about that today a little bit because the god is god of jealous god but when he said you know when when we say that God is God of jealous God, you know, a lot of people have a lot of, a lot of misunderstanding about that because, like, what does it really mean that God is God of jealous? You see what I'm saying? Why would God jealous? You see what I'm saying? You know? And we have to truly understand what that really means because if we don't really understand what that really means, then sometimes we could misunderstand the word of God. And one of the things that I realize is that as a Christian, one of the great danger uh, as a Christian is this, that misunderstanding the word of God or misunderstanding who God is or misunderstanding about God and, and the things of God. So I truly believe that when we begin to misunderstand those things, then you know what? We are going to be misled or we are going to kind of, you know, get upset or something so that we will not really follow God, you know, or, or, or his commands. So that is why I truly believe that, you know, it is important to understand that, you know, why we, why is God a jealous God? You see what I'm saying? You know, because the um, Bible says this, in Hosea, it says that, you know what, my people are perished because of lack of knowledge. And one of the things that I realized is that I think, you know, Michelle kind of mentioned it too because, you know, she thought that, you know, as she was conversing with people that there were a lot of deception that was going on. I truly believe that. You see what I'm saying? That people perish because of deception. You see what I'm saying? People perish because they truly do not know the word of God. So one of the things that I just wanted to challenge you is that, you know what? You know, we need to have a knowledge. You see what I'm saying? We need to have a knowledge of God. One of the things that I wanted to challenge you is that, what is the purpose of Christian life? And, you know, what is the purpose to be a Christian? And a lot of people say, well, maybe it's worshiping the Lord. Or, or maybe a lot of people will say, oh, they would come to church and, you know, you see what I'm saying? worship God and listen to the message and things like that. But one of the things that I want to say is this, the purpose of Christian, okay, the main thing for Christian is this, that you may know the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because you cannot worship someone you, you do not know. You, you have to understand that. You see what I'm saying? That is why Paul has said that, you know what? Knowing Christ is the excellence of knowledge. And he was saying that, you know what? It's the most noble knowledge that you could have. You see what I'm saying? In this world, when you know the Lord. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know what? He considered all other things as rubbish. And then, you know what? He said that, you know what? That I may know that his death and his resurrection in my life. So I truly believe that true purpose of Christian life is this, that you may know the Lord. Amen? Because if we don't know who he is, you see what I'm saying? We might do something that will displease him. You see what I'm saying? If we don't know who we, he is, then you know what? We can serve. You see what I'm saying? But you know what? We will serve ourselves. You see what I'm saying? You know, we, a lot of people say, oh, we serve this and we serve that. But you know what? Truly sometimes people serve themselves. You see what I'm saying? Why? They're not truly serving the Lord or they're not really glorifying God. And one of the reasons 
reason for that is that they do not know who he is. You see what I'm saying? And, and then, you know what? We can have a lot of misunderstandings. We can, have, we can be deceived. You see what I'm saying? So many things. So that is why one of the key things that I wanted to tell you is this, that one true thing that we need to have as a Christian is the getting to know Jesus, getting to know God. And I truly pray that as you go deeper in your relationship with God, that you begin to know the Lord. You see what I'm saying? You begin to know who he is. One of the things that I realized is that, you know, as I was just praying last night too, and I was just being sorrowful for this generation. And my heart was just crying out. It, it isn't me. You see what I'm saying? I don't, you know, weep or I don't really like groan uh, because like this world is like that. It, it was from the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit was, I was able to see what is going on in this world right now and things like that. And then, you know what? My, the Holy Spirit begins to groan inside of me and start weeping. And I was just praying for this generation. And like, you know, the, the, the prayer was just very natural. And, 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 you know, like, and one of the things that I realized is that, you know what? There's so many darkness right now. And there's so much deception. You see what I'm saying? Among Christians and also in the church. That, you know, a lot of people don't know who the Lord is. You see what I'm saying? They don't even know whether they're really pleasing God or they're not. And pleasing the Lord and things like that. And there's so many people who are being deceived in this generation. And when I was looking at that, I was just crying out to the Lord. I said, Lord, be merciful to this generation. Lord, you have to show your mercy and then you know what you have to do your work in this generation for this generation to come back to you and I was just just pouring my heart to the Lord and it was not me but it was the Holy Spirit who was just doing that through me and I was just looking at it and I said like if if there's truly a one person or two people who could really pray and call on the Lord and then you know what truly understand you know who God is and, and the heart of God you know and then truly like have that heart and then to pray for this generation I think this generation will become different and one of the things that I realize is that you know what as a Christian you know we need to have that kind of heart you see what I'm saying and we have to know the heart of God and the mind of God so that you know what we as we begin to cry out to him that we may bring this nation back to the Lord so I truly believe that I just wanted to challenge you you see what I'm saying to get to know the Lord because if you don't know who God is then you know what? even our serving and then even what we do sometimes we can be mistaken you see what I'm saying we are trying to do everything as we can you to serve the Lord honor God but if we don't truly know the Lord then you know what God is not honored through our serving God is not honored through our you know activities that we give to the Lord and one of the things that I realize is this that sometimes with so many programs and so many things inside the church and the people and the fellowship that you know what we lose sight of God and we lose sight of Jesus. And as I was just meditating in the word of God, you know, that, that incident came to me. You remember the, um, the woman who was bleeding for 12 years? You see what I'm saying? You know, she was going through the crowd. And she was only looking to Jesus so that she may receive the healing. You see what I'm saying? So there was a lot of crowd following Jesus. And she was going through them and then touched Jesus. And then, you know what? She was instantly healed. And when I was looking at that illustration, when I was looking at that story, I realized that, you know what, sometimes we lost Jesus through all that crowd. You see what I'm saying? You know, all the activities that we do. And sometimes, like, you know, all the worship or leading or worship, and then we, lost, we lost sight of Jesus, you know? Sometimes, you know, people come because they like the fellowship. Sometimes people come, they like the worship. Or sometimes the people come, they like the message. But one of the things that I realized is that sometimes through that crowd, we lost Jesus. You see what I'm saying? You know, even though all those people, the crowds, were following Jesus, but they did not really touch Jesus in faith. They they were not aware of Jesus, even though they were with Jesus. Does that make sense? But this woman, you know, they didn't. He, she didn't look at the crowd. She didn't look at the people. But she had only one focus, and that was to touch Jesus. You know, and I truly believe that that's what we should be. You see what I'm saying? Because of all the crowds, because all the people, because all the programs, because all the fellowship that we could have. But you know what? If we lose Jesus, then there is nothing. You know, and you know when I look at today's Christianity, that's what I see in today's Christianity. That through all the programs and all these different things, that people lose sight of Jesus, and that their life is not really focused on Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Because they're, they're interested in ministry. They're interested in different things. They're interested in mission. They're interested, but you know what? Not full devotion to God and not full devotion to Jesus Christ. 
So that was the one thing that I was, and then, you know, I was just, just crying out. In this, that is so true, that in this generation, that we lose sight of God. We lose sight of Jesus. And you know what? We build up so many activities in our life, religious activities, you know. And then, you know what? That, we, that many people do not have that true devotion to the Lord. And one of the things that I want to tell you is this, that, you know, we need to understand that God is God, a jealous God. That does not, that means that we cannot worship the idols and we cannot worship God, you know, at the same time. We have to worship the Lord. But first thing that I wanted to say is this, you know, our, our terms, our word of jealous and his term of jealous is completely different thing. And that's the first thing that we need to recognize. Our jealous is this, is that, you know what, I don't want other people to be more prosperous than I am. You know, our jealous is that I don't want other people to be more successful than I am. Does that make sense? You know, that's what jealous is. You see what I'm saying? You know, when other people are successful than I am, then you know what? I'm jealous. You see what I'm saying? I'm envious of them. You know, one of the things that I realized is that in, in, in 18 years of ministry, okay, that I watched people and I just, you know, saw, saw people. And one of the things that I realized is that when Christian brothers and sisters suffer, and they're going through a hard time. There are so many Christians who come to them and say, oh, you know, let me help you. Let me encourage you. Let me pray for you. I've seen so many people like that. But I haven't seen a lot of people when other people are really rejoicing. When other people are, good things are happening, and then you know what? Other, pe other person that really rejoices with them. One of the things that I realize is that jealous is jealousy is the hardest thing to overcome sometimes, you know? Because we want to be better than other people. You see what I'm saying? We all have that inside of me, you know? I want God to use me, not my friend. You see what I'm saying? I want God to use me, you know? We all have that. So what do we do? Sometimes when other people are prospering and what other people are doing well, and when they have a deeper relationship with God and that God is using them, what do we do? We're not really happy, you know? We kind of say inside, you know what, Lord, what about me, <laughs> you know? You see what I'm saying? How come you're using my friend, but you're not using me? That is jealousy. See, jealousy in our term is a very bad thing. Why? Because we don't want to see other people prosper more than me, you know, or successful more than me. So that's what jealousy is, you know. That's our kind of jealousy. And we have a lot of that envy. You see what I'm One thing that I realize, you know, people have a lot of that envy. You see what I'm saying, you know? And then when other people are doing well, and then, you know, compliment and receive a lot of praise, and we're kind of like, uh, you know, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, one of the things that I realize is that American people, they love winners. You see what I'm saying? You know, they love winners, you know, in their life. They want, you know, they, 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 they desire, the, you know, people with excellence. You see what I'm saying? In their life, you know. So that is why sometimes we have that, you know. We have that, oh, I, wanna, I, can't, I wish I could be like that. And then, you know what, we have that jealous... But one of the things that I realize is that, you know what, jealousy is a bad thing, you know. And that's the, one of the hardest things to overcome as a Christian sometimes, you know. Why? Because it's a matter of heart, you know. We don't really say it. You see what I'm saying? I'm jealous. Or, uh, you know, we, 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 I'm envious, you know. We don't really say it. But you know what? It happens in our heart, you know. So, you know, in a way, that human jealousy is like putting other people down so that I can be lifted up. It, that's the attitude of jealousy, you know. But God's jealousy is completely different. It's, it's completely different from our own jealousy. God's jealousy is that God wants to bless you. He is the one who created you. And he is saying to you that only way that you will be happy, that you will be joyful, that you will be truly blessed, is being with me, serving me, and honoring me. Why? Because you have to understand, God is the one who created you, you know? Sometimes, you know, when I was growing up, I was looking at myself and like, what makes me happy? What makes me joyful? Because I want to live with joy. I want happiness in my life. You see what I'm saying? Everybody kind of seek that. So I was kind of looking for it. You, know, you see what I'm saying? I was kind of seeking, oh, what really makes me happy? You know, you see what I'm saying? Because I tried different things in the world too. You see what I'm saying? And then tried to make me, myself happy. But you know what? Those things that will not last because that's the happiness that the world offers to me. You know, one of the things that one of the despair I really had about, I, I, I just felt emptiness for, for the first time in my life in this world was this. When I was junior high, 
I had a summer school program. And in the summer school program, we went to Magic Mountain, you know. I kind of grew up in a place where when I come home, it's kind of very depressive. You see what I'm saying, you know. So it was for me, it was really good to go outside. You see what I'm saying, with my friends. You see what I'm saying, during junior high. And then, you know what, we went to Magic Mountain. Man, I had a blast. I really enjoyed the time. I loved the roller coasters and, and things like that. And I was just so enjoying myself. I was so happy for that day. When I was coming back and I was riding a school bus, and when I was on the school bus, I was asking myself this question. Why can't this happiness be eternal? Why do I have to go home? <laughs> you know? And that was the first time in my life I felt deep emptiness about life, about the world. What this world all can offer to me was limited. It was temporary. You see what I'm saying? And that joy, that happiness was not eternal. You see what I'm saying? And then I found great joy when I found God. You know? And only building a relationship with Him I begin to understand that I will be happy and I will be joyful. You see what I'm saying? But one of the things that I realize is that this is what God is saying. God is saying that, you know what? No matter how much you try to have things or possess things in this world or enjoy things in this world or experience in this world, that it will not make you happy. Only serving me, only serving the worshiping God will make you happy, and God knows that. I don't know what really makes me happy, but God does. Why? Because he's the one who created us, amen? So that is why God is saying that, come to me, all you weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest, you know? God is saying that, you know what, come to me, and serve me, and, and you know what, honor me, then I guarantee you that you will truly be blessed, you know? That's what God is saying. That's the jealousy that he has. He knows that when you go out into the world, you're going to be miserable. He knows that sin causes pain in your life. He knows that. And that is why he's jealous of you. He's saying that, you know what, stop worshiping idols. Stop loving the world. Come to me. Then you will have a true joy. You will have true happiness. You can live a life of abundance in your life. That's what God is saying. God is jealous of you. You know? Think about this. Every addiction in life is idol worship. Because addiction means that you are loving that thing and you're obsessed with that thing more than God. Isn't that true? But think about this. Every addiction destroys your life. For example, drugs. <laughs> If you really think about it, it destroys that person's life. You know? Right? I seen a father who was addicted to gambling. He was wasting family's money away, literally. And that family always lived a poor life. Because one day his house was taken away. His car was taken away. It was family's car. Family's home was just taken away. One, one day, you know? Students who play too much game, they will not excel in, in school. You see what I'm saying? You know? And his life is just going nowhere if you continue to be addicted to the games. Think about it. Every addiction, if you think about it, it will ruin your life. That's what God is saying. You know? Everything that we do in the world and then love the world and wor idol worship, you're going to open the doors to the devil who's going to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why God is saying, don't do it. Don't worship the idol. Love me. You know? And that's the only way that we could truly have joy, truly have happiness, truly live a blessed life. Amen? You know? Obey me. That's what the Bible says. If you really obey God, then what do you do? If you go in, you'll be blessed. You go out, you'll be blessed. Amen? You know, everywhere you go, that you'll be blessed. That's what God is saying. That's why God is jealous of you. You see what I'm saying? Because he loves you so much that he does not want you to be in, 
want you to be in pain. You know? God loves you so much that He does not want you to be unhappy and that your life will become miserable. You know? That's what God is saying. He's saying, come to me. I want you to open your Bible. James. Let's go to James. Four. Four and five. Chapter four, verse four and five. Let us read it all together. If you have yes Bible, you adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world make himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he earns jealously over the spirit that he has made dwell in us? What he's saying is this, that when people love the world, and when Christians love the world, the Holy Spirit is living inside of them, is, is zealously jealous of that person. Why? He almost comes to the point where he is groaning. He is weeping. He is grieving. Why? Because he knows, the Holy Spirit knows, that only way that our life will be happy and truly be blessed is go to God. But when this person loved the world, it's idolatry. And when that idolatry comes, what happens? Sadness, misery, emptiness comes with it. You know? You have to understand that. That is why it says the Holy Spirit living inside of us is so jealous. You know? Do you know that your father's heart will break? When you love the world more. When you worship the idol. And that is why he's so jealous. And that is why when the prodigal son abandoned the father and went to his wild living, you know, and that after he spent all his money in the wild living, you know, he became poor. And then he was saying to himself, you know what, in my father's house there's a lot of food, plenty of food. But I cannot even eat the the fruit that even swine, the, the pigs eat. You know, I cannot even get that. Maybe I should go back to my father. And when he decided to come to the father, what did father do? Father was waiting for him. And when he saw that prodigal son coming back to him, that he ran to him. Why? Because he was waiting. He was jealous. You know? Because only he knows that only through Him that we'll be happy, we'll be truly blessed. I want you to understand that today, that when you love the world more than God, He's jealous of you. And He's waiting. He's saying, you know what, come back to me. Come to me. You know? And then you could have a life of happiness, life of joy, life of peace. And that's what he desires. The second thing that I want to say to you is this. Jealousy is a very intense feeling. What that means is this. That when God loves you, he's a jealous God. That means that his love is very intense also. His love for you is very, very intense. I want you to open your Bible. Let's go to Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 8. Verse 6. If you have the Yes Bible, let us read it all together. 
Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is fierce as the grave. It flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. This is what God is saying here. Love is very intense. It is strong as death. That's what it says, right? God's love, especially, is strong as death. That's why Jesus Christ came to here and died for us. You see what I'm saying? Because he loves you so much. But if love is very intense, then jealousy is also very intense too. Think about it. You know? And God's jealousy is very intense. And jealousy is very intense. And that is why it says that jealousy is fierce as grave. The flashes of flashes of fire and the very flame of the Lord. It's like a fire just burned through. The judgment of God comes when his jealousy is aroused. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because his love is very intense. And also his jealousy is very intense. This is what, I, what he means. If I love my wife intensely, you see what I'm saying? You know, with passion. Okay? Then you know what? When my wife loves other men, I'll be so jealous. You see what I'm saying? But hatred, even like hatred, you know, that I could not stand that she will love other men more than me. I'm going to go crazy. You see what I'm saying? Literally. Because just as how much, how much I love her, you see what I'm saying? If she's an adulterous woman, you see what I'm saying? And loves other men, it's going to drive me nuts. God is feeling the same way. Because his love is very intense. Then you know what? His jealousy is very intense too. You know? So that is why when Israelites were worshiping other idols, he couldn't stand it. He had to judge. You see what I'm saying? His people. You know? Even though he's a God of God of love, his love is intense, his old jealousy is intense. This is what I want to say. How many of you saw a Passion of Christ? You know? I saw it. I saw it before it came out in the movie because um, Mel Gibson kind of uh, asked all the pastors to come and watch this movie. Like, I went to the preview in a Saddleback Church. And we went there for the first time and we saw that movie. I was cringing inside. When I was watching that movie for the first time, I was crying. The emotion was so intense inside of me. You know why? Because every time they were weeping Jesus, you know, weeping him, you know, every lash that was there, every cry that he felt, it was just like, it was so cringing inside of me. It was so intense, you know. After I saw that movie, somebody bought me a DVD, you know. You know what? I never opened that DVD. I didn't want to watch it. You know why? Because I didn't want to feel that intensity again. You see what I'm saying? While watching that movie. I realized that God's love is so intense for us that his jealousy is also very intense. You know? We have to understand something. What is the greatest commandment that the Lord has given to us? To love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And the second part is love our neighbor as ourselves. I truly believe that many people, most of the people, will disobey that commandment. That's my assumption. You know, I mean, if you are honest with yourself, you know, I don't think you will love him that way. You see what I'm saying? Or love other people that way. You know? I'm more interested in myself than other, my neighbor. You see what I'm saying? You know? I cannot love them as I love myself. You know? If we were truly honest you know, with ourselves. You know? But that is the greatest commandment the Lord has given to us. To love him with everything that we have. You see what I'm saying? And when you love him that way, then there's no idols in my life. You know? We're not committing a spiritual adultery when we love him that way. And that's the kind of love that he wants to have 
for us to, for, to him, toward him. Why? Because his love is very intense. And that is why he sacrificed his son. Amen. The same way, that's what he desired for us. That we will love him with that intensity. But this is what I want to say. Okay? We're living in the last day. Okay? And the last church in the book of Revelation is Church of Laodicea. Remember? This church is a lukewarm church. Why are they lukewarm? Because they love God, but they love the world too. That's why it's lukewarm. But you know what Jesus has said to that church? You know, like all seven churches, Jesus complimented them. You see what I'm saying? Jesus never complimented this church. Did you know that? No praise whatsoever. Even the dead church, Jesus praised. Jesus praised them. You know what they said? He said, you are dead. You know, there's no life in you. There's no life of Jesus. There's no life of the Holy Spirit in you. You are dead, spiritually speaking. You know, but you know what he said to that church? He said, you know what? But even though you are dead, there are few people in that church, you know, who does not, you know, um, make their robe dirty, who always walks with Jesus with a pure heart and follows him. That's the praise that they got, you know. But with this church, there is absolutely no praise. And look at what Jesus was saying to them. Jesus was saying to them, you know what? I'd rather you be cold or hot. I don't want you to be lukewarm. Think about this for a little bit, okay? I was kind of thinking about this logically. You see what I'm saying? What Jesus is saying is this. What he really desires, his priority and his desire is this. That you be hot. That you be full of passion and love God, right? And the second thing, that he wants is, or cold, you know? I want you to be in the world, you see what I'm saying, you know? Enjoy the things of this world, you know? That's what he's saying, you know? And the third thing that he wants, the last thing that he wanted was lukewarmness, you know? But think about this. I was thinking about this a little bit, I said, but isn't it better that people will come to church, lukewarm, even though they're lukewarm, they'll, they'll come to church, and they'll eventually meet God and they'll eventually commit themselves or think. You see what I'm saying? You know? Rather than being in the world, rather than being in the nightclubs or, you know, you see what I'm saying, living a li wild life, rather than that, isn't it better that they would just come to church? According to Jesus, it's not. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because if you're lukewarm and you're coming to church, you are going to be deceived. Because you are going to think of yourself that you're a Christian. Lukewarmness comes when you add hot and cold together. Isn't that true? So lukewarm people, they think that they're hot. Because it's not void of, you know, hot. You see what I'm saying? Right? They have hot and they have cold. You see what I'm saying? So lukewarmness, they think that they're hot. And that's what Church of Laodicea were thinking. They were saying that, you know what, I am rich. You know, I have nothing lacking. You know, I have so many things in my life that I could enjoy. And when Jesus was looking at them, and you do not understand, you are poor, wretched, you are blind, and you are naked. You yourself do not know, know that. Jesus would have a rather cold, is this. Because at least that, that person will not be deceived that they're a Christian, that they're saved. I'm serious. You know? That's what Jesus was saying. You know? A lot of people say, oh, isn't it better that people will come to church? No. If they are living a lukewarm Christian life, it is better that they go out into the world and enjoy themselves. And just live according to how they want to live. According to Jesus. Why? Because at least if you're cold, you know that you're cold. You see what I'm saying? And you have a chance that you're going to come back to God, right? But if you're lukewarm, you're going to have a slim chance that you're going to commit yourself to God. And that you're going to be hot and you're going to become, have a passion for God. Because you already think, 
we already think, that person already thinks that they already have a passion for the Lord. Does that make sense? And that's the generation that we live in. Because it's the last church. You know, it's, it talks about the condition of the church in different era. And that's the, that describes exactly the church in this last day. Lukewarmness. Yeah, people come to church. People worship God. We have programs. You know? But you know what? They don't have a passion. They don't have that zeal. They don't have that diligence that they want to serve God and honor God. They, they don't have that fire inside of them. They just want to serve the Lord and honor Him. And that's the generation that we live in. You see? One thing I want you to understand something. You'll never be happy, truly be happy, if you do not truly love the Lord and serve Him. A lot of people say, oh, long as I have a girlfriend. If I could have fellowship with people inside the church, a lot of people look, you know, I I'm telling you, you know. Or a lot of people say, oh, if I have something. You know, like a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know what? The thing that they're seeking is from the world. You see what I'm saying? And they think that those things will give them contentment. I want to say this to you. It will not. I remember one single mom was worrying about her daughter. Because she's by herself. You see what I'm saying? And she's a single mom, so she always works, and she's by herself. And she always says, oh, you know, I wish that I could have, like, a brother or sister for her, you know, so that she will not be lonely. You know what I said to her? I said this. If she has a brother and sister, you're going to have more problems. <laughs> now, different kind of problem comes. Isn't that true? You see what I'm saying? It does not mean that when she has a sister or brother, it, you know, it doesn't automatically that they will, you know, you see what I'm saying, get along together. You see what I'm saying, love one another. You see what I'm saying? Not, maybe they will fight. You don't know. You see what I'm saying? Maybe there will they'll, they'll be strife in that family. And then now you have to take care of both of them as a single mom. You see what I'm saying? You know how hard that is? Think about it. A lot of people say, a lot of people say this, okay? I'm single and I want to get married. If I get married, I'm not going to be lonely. Really. You know? If you meet a spouse that who does not understand you, you're going to be more lonelier than before, when you're single. You see what I'm saying? You know? And you're going to have more problems. Think about that. A lot of people say, if I have this, if I have that, if, you know what? There's always a positive side and a negative side of everything. What you do. Every decision that you make. You see what I'm saying? It's true. You know? A lot of people don't understand that. You know? I want to say this to you guys, okay? Only marriage in Christ is happy and joyful. And, and there's a blessing of God. Amen? Amen? Only building a relationship and have a kid. A kid's in the Lord and educating them in the Lord will bring you a happy family. Amen? I want you to understand that. I see so many people looking for things in the world without God, you know, or outside of God, it seems. But I guarantee you, you know, you have to meet the right kind of person. You see what I'm saying? If you want to have a happy marriage, you know, a lot of older single people ask me this question a lot. Should I get married? You know what I say? If you meet the right person and you, are, you guys are happy and you guys can serve God together, then get, get married. But if it's not, then don't get married. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because you're going to have more pain in life. More suffering that you're going to go through. There's always a two sides. God said, you know what? It is not good for a man to be alone. That's what he said. So that's why he made his wife Eve, right? You know, it was not good. But 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Paul says this, that it is not good to get married. 
<laughs> That's what he said. He, he has an opposite point of view. You know? Why? Because it could become a burden to you. You know? And that's why I always say to people, every decision that you make that's going to be positive and negative, that's going to come along with you. You know? What I'm trying to say is don't assume that you're seeking the things in this world that will make you happy. No. That does not give you eternal happiness or eternal blessing. Only what you seek in the Lord and that exists in the Lord, both you and your spouse in, are in the Lord, then you'll be happy. You'll be joyful. And that's why God wants. That's why He's jealous. His love is intense towards you. It's so intense that He does not he will not allow you to live a miserable life. He will not allow you to, to destroy yourself. Amen? Because he loves you so much. But think about it. Think about your parents. Whose parent doesn't want that for their children? You see what I'm saying? They have intense love for their kids. You know? And wants best for them. Right? You know? I mean, which parents want their, want their kids to do drugs? You see what I'm saying? You know? And destroy their life. You see what I'm saying? That's God's love. And His love is very intense. Look at the cross. It's very intense. You know? And His jealousy also is very intense too. That's why He had to punish sometimes. When you look at read the Bible, you know? He had to judge His people that He loves. Because they were arousing his jealousy toward them. You know? That's why the flame of jealousy is like a flame of fire that comes from, out from God. That's a judgment. You see what I'm saying? You know? It comes to. That's why I worry about America. I'm sorry, but I really worry about America. And Christians too. And the churches too. You know? We are arousing our God's jealousy right now. You know? And the world is brewing something right now. Really. We need to commit ourselves. God's love is intense. And if we truly understand the cross, if you truly understand the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that our love for Him should be intense too. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your And I guarantee you, there will be blessing. There will be happiness, amen, to those who, people who obey, you know. But outside of God, there is no eternal happiness. Only temporary ones. You can have fun for a while, but you know what? You're going to still feel empty inside. You see? But don't go after those things. You know? I don't, because I don't want good people to suffer. You know? I've seen it in my life in the ministry. You know? Because some people are going away from God. Doing things outside of Him. And loving the world more than, the, more than Jesus. You know? those people who truly love God and serve Him, honor Him, there'll be a true blessing. And that's what He desires. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank You. I give You praise. I give You worship. Lord Jesus, we thank You.